Welcome back to React Native Radio Podcast. Brought to you by the NFT crash of 2022. Who could have possibly seen that coming? Episode 234, React Native Tips and Tricks. Uh, Hey, Mazen, how do you feel about variable casing? Do you have a preference? I do have a preference, but at the same time, I kind of like my like non-preference. So (laughs) you're probably referencing the Slack message that was started. (laughs) Yeah, we had a bit of a Slack. It wasn't an argument. It was a discussion. Discussion, yes. This morning about variable casing. Specifically, how do you handle acronyms in your variable names? Like API, HTTP, URL. Do you leave it all capitalized like an acronym normally would be? Specifically, this is in JavaScript where you, like the, the standard is uh, camel casing, right? Where every new word starts with a capital letter and then the, the rest of the word is lowercase. Yeah. What do you do with acronyms? I tend to go with capitalizing the first character. At least I have in the past. So fetch API, only the A in API would be capital. But I did vote for capital A, capital P, capital I, because I always come back to thinking and feeling that that's the better option and easier to read. HTTP is kind of weird if it's H, if the H is the only one that's capital. Right. Now, the one part that kind of throws me for a loop is if the word API or HTTP or URL is the first word in your camel cased const, do you mm. capitalize it? So let's say you're your, I guess you wouldn't do it necessarily. You'd probably put fetch at the beginning, but it was, you know, API data. Would you do capital okay. API, capital D, ATA? Yeah, because starting it with a capital letter makes it look like a component. Exactly. Interesting. Because yeah. if it was API data, you wouldn't go data from API. You could. Basically, what what the result of this debate was is that it's a very nuanced, it's not black and white. There are cases, cases, no pun intended. There are situations <laughs> where it makes sense to do it all caps and situations where it makes sense to do it like normal lowercase. It's very strange. Yeah. I think the, the general consensus was per, we prefer strict camel case. So lower, like lowercase your acronyms. I think if you look at the uh, voting, it was <laughs> five to six. So very, very tight. Oh, wait. Where the all caps won. What? The last time I looked at it, it was like six to one. Robin. And now it's five to six. Last time I looked at this thread, there were 10 replies and now there's 45 <laughs> replies. So We did, to be fair, we did go a little bit off the rails. <laughs> Once you start getting uh, gifts involved, the, the conversation's over. <laughs> and might I point out, the first gif came from one Robin Hines. What? No, I'm... A- I am a proper millennial and I love a good GIF reaction. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good one. We should put this GIF in the show notes. Anyway, we'll put the the epic GIF in the show notes, I promise. We should probably uh, get started. Hello, I'm Robin Hines, your host for the day. Jamin is still, still in Florida. Actually, I think he's home technically now. I think he just got back. Yeah. As we record this, he's like just barely back, but he'll be back on the podcast next week, I think. Uh, so I'm still your your temporary host for the day and friendly software engineer here at Infinite Red. I'm joined by my captivating co-host Mazen. Whoa. I searched I searched all the notes for that word and I couldn't find it, so I think it was legit. You mean you didn't like think about it when you were thinking about me for the show? I mean that too. That yeah, too. I thought so. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Mazen lives in North Carolina with his wife and new little baby. He's a former pro soccer player and coach and is also a senior React Native engineer here at Infinite Red. How's it going, Mazen? Going well. Getting more sleep as the days go by, so can't complain. Good. That's good. I wish I could say the same. Mm. My 
<laughs> my kids are sick right now, as am I. So that kind of eats mm. into the sleep a little bit. I do have to, to uh, take a moment to say that this episode is sponsored by Infinite Red. Infinite Red is a premier React Native design and development agency located fully remote in the U.S. and Canada. If you're looking for React Native expertise for your next React Native project, hit us up. You can learn more on our website, infinite.red slash React Native. And of course, don't forget to mention that you heard about us through the React Native Radio podcast. All right, let's get into our topic for today. Uh, today is going to be a little bit of a hodgepodge. Uh, I think we're going to we're going to talk about just general React Native tips and tricks. If you're new to React Native, these are some things you might encounter, uh, ways to just generally improve your React Native app, uh, and helpful tips for being a React Native developer uh, that we've learned through our gosh six seven years of React Native experience. Yeah. If you've been developing in React Native for a while, some of these will sound very mm -hmm. familiar and some that you'll see them and you'll be like, oh, I forgot that. <laughs> Back again and redoing. Yeah. Yes, it should hopefully be instructive if you're new to React Native and relatable if you're experienced in React Native. So let's let's talk about maybe some of those pesky red screens that you might see when you're when you're doing React Native development, especially if you're if you're first starting. I would say probably the most common that you might see right away mm -hmm. is uh the infamous bundle not found could not connect to development server. I feel like as things have matured a little bit in the in the ecosystem, I say that matured and then I come back and say I, I get this all the time with Android. So I tend to think this is more of an Android one than iOS, but doesn't say doesn't happen on iOS. For me, the easiest and like first place I usually start when it comes to this error, I, I do the whole ADB trick where you do ADB reverse TCP colon. It's usually 8081, TCP 8081. And then your Android version usually ends up working at that point. So yeah, that's specifically on Android, right? Yes. And if you're on a device, yeah, on a device, if you're on using a, a physical Android device, that means your Android device can't figure out how to talk to your development server because your ports aren't available to your Android device. So you have to run that little command. It's it's in the React Native docs. I'll, we'll make sure to link it. It's also we also have a nice, helpful yarn script for that command in our Ignite boilerplate as well, if you're using Ignite. Uh, so that's one reason you'd see that React Native does have a lot of nice developer experience features. Mainly when you run it, it will start a packager if there's not already a packager running. Uh, so hopefully that would take care of this error for you. Yeah, I think kind of going back to the whole 8081, I know this is also an issue with Windows machines because 8081 is run by another program. I can't remember the program off the top of my head. So you for Android, you specifically have to pick a port other than 8081. And I believe oh. that the docs usually say 8088 or something. I can't remember off the top of my head. Oh. It's just, it's something very random where you're like, why are we just use 8082? But I think they just point to 8088 as like a freebie in case other programs are using them. So I think this is, this kind of says like, tells your Android device, listen on this port for my updates, for my bundle, so that you mm -hmm. can kind of get the live updates. So that's how they kind of find the bundle. Do you see this often on iOS? Um, I see, I wouldn't say I see it often. Sometimes I'll see it if I've killed my packager and then I go to manually reload my app. Um, that, that happens relatively frequently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then uh, an error kind of related to this um, is when you you get an error about the port being taken. Uh, that happens a lot if you have maybe multiple React Native apps running at the same time, which maybe you're doing if you're if you're spinning up new new React Native apps to, you know, try out new features, or you're like building that to do app and and other sort of tutorial style apps. If you have multiple React Native apps, you may get. Uh, port is already taken, which just means you have a packager running 
already and you need to kill it. On iOS, in your info.plist, you'll need the NSAllow local networking to be set to true in your XML so that it can actually look at local host. And that, that's, that's true by default, right? It should be true by default, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're not, if you're getting that with Android, just a quick check on your info.plist to make sure yeah. it's, it's still there and maybe hasn't been overwritten. Awesome. I think a, a common one that a lot of beginners see is uh, there's a couple different invariant violations that you'd see a lot. Uh, one of them is text strings must be rendered within a component. So if you just have some sort of like stray characters in your in your React Native like TSX file or JSX file, it'll it'll tell you that because uh, if if you have just random characters, they they have to be wrapped by an actual text component. Uh, you can't put them directly inside of a view. I also get that error if I've just like if my cat's walked across my keyboard or I've like like <laughs> started typing often. and I didn't know where my cursor was. <laughs> You'll get that. Uh, uh, there's also invariant violation element type is invalid, which a lot of times means uh, it's trying to render a component that wasn't exported properly. Either you're trying to import it as a default component, but it's a named export, or you're trying to import it as named and it's default. That's pretty common. So that's one where you would do import file name from you know, path, or it'd be import curly brace mm -hmm. file or, or component name yeah. from path. So right. yeah, that's fairly common, I would say. The next one on our list is package not installed correctly, unable to resolve module. This is for me, I usually get this when maybe on newer versions, again, it's kind of been improved on, but sometimes you're linking, or if you do your linking manually, you may have missed a step along the way. So there is something that's missing that you kind of need to go back and reinstall. Or are you for like forgotten to run yes. yarn and you're referencing a package that hasn't been installed, or you may need to restart your server after installing new node modules. Yeah. A lot of times you'll get unable to resolve module errors. Yeah, I usually just tend to... Oh, but wait, hold on. I think we just figured out Robin only uses Yarn and not NPM. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Infinite Red is pretty much a yarn shop. Not not an actual yeah. yarn shop. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember the last time I used NPM. I, I think also one thing that I do to kind of avoid this is always kill my server, mm -hmm. install or add depending on what your package is, and then restart it. When in doubt, restart. Yes. That's a lesson that I learned pretty early on in when I was in code school. Because, I mean, if you're new to programming in general, I don't, it, like, it's, it makes sense that you wouldn't even know that as a concept. So, like, I would fix something and not understand why it wasn't working. And someone was like, oh, hey, you have to restart your real server. Oh, that's a thing. So, yeah, when in doubt restart uh, if you want to make extra sure that you're like completely clean slate you can pass dash dash reset cache to uh, your um, start command that's always safe to do all, mm -hmm. pretty much oh, all yeah. the time i i pretty much do that by default yeah that clears your uh, metro cache i think yes uh, the next one is a command phase script execution failed which uh sounds like it's it's um, specific to people with M1 Max, which is starting to be more and more people. If you ask Jamin, if you're not using an M1 Mac, you're <laughs> basically not a real developer. <laughs> Sorry for using <laughs> my 2016 laptop, <laughs> Jamin. Intel, Intel is obsolete, according to him. I'll, I'll be sure to go. I live just like 10 minutes away from Intel's main campus so i'll be sure to go over there and tell them like hey Ooh. you guys are obsolete <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah if you have a <laughs> if you have n1 mac you may get uh, this command face script execution failed error and there is something you can add to your i think pod file yeah uh to fix that and we'll we'll link that in the show notes if you're not familiar with it so there's also a bunch of other errors that you might get uh, trying to use various features of React, uh, specifically uh, React hooks, which are newish. They're what three, three or four years old now. I'd love to see an app not using hooks these days. 
I know. I feel like most apps are using hooks now, yeah. but they can be they can be somewhat uh, somewhat tricky uh, to learn. They're maybe a bit mm-hmm. counterintuitive. Uh, you can get some errors when you're first trying to use hooks. Uh, the one that I still get regularly uh, is invocation order or like conditional declaration. So if you try and put mm-hmm. a hook, like a use effect, a use state inside a conditional, or if you try and do like an early return before you've declared a hook. So if you do a, if condition is met, return null, and then after that you have a use effect or a use state, you're going to get an error uh, saying yeah. that a hook, like you can't change the order of your hooks, which just means you always have to have the exact same hooks in the same order every single time your component is rendered. I mean, that sounds like a common one too, because you would think that from a performance perspective, coming into a, a component, you know, I'd want to check my props first and say, if ID if ID is undefined, go ahead and return null because, you know, we don't have an ID. Mm-hmm. We don't have to render, cause like a network bog or just any performance downside. Instead, you could just kind of keep your use effect first and, you know, use effect always usually runs on change mm-hmm. of your parameters or if you just don't have a parameter on mount. And you could wrap whatever is in there checking the ID and then make sure the ID is yep. in one of your parameters. So whenever it changes, it'll re-render yep. every single time. Yep. Simple fix. Basically, you go, you want to keep your conditionals inside your hooks in that case. And you could still have your conditional outside of the hook that still checks and returns null. You just have to make sure the hooks, yeah, the hooks are come before it or like always yeah. render. You may also get errors about missing dependencies. If your your hook uses a particular variable and it's not in the dependency array, you may get, I think they're more warnings, not errors. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how strictly it's enforced. It's not going to be a red screen, but you may get uh, linting errors. You may get a lot of linting errors. Mm-hmm. And depending on how your project is set up, I think we worked on a project, Robin, where the entire CI, CD would kind of crash on mm-hmm. you if it wasn't included. So yes, very depends strict. on how strict your linting <laughs> yeah. is. Uh, yes. Uh, you'll, also, you'll also get errors if you try and call hooks within other hooks. So if you try, one I, I tried to do the other day and got yelled at uh, was I tried to put a, I tried to put, I think, a use memo inside of a use callback. Yeah, I tried to do that all the time. And that was not, that's not valid. Yeah, so don't do that. <laughs> so those are, I mean, those are some errors that you'll probably, you'll probably encounter when you're first learning React Native, or even if you're not first learning React Native, <laughs> as evidenced mm-hmm. by the fact that I encountered most of those errors in the last week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but what happens if you get an error that just doesn't make any sense? You don't know where it's coming from. If you Google it and there's like nothing helpful, you you just don't have a good reason for this error to be happening. Uh, what are some things you can do? Here at Infinite Red, we have a command, a custom like bash script called Nuclear. I love that name. <laughs> well, you can, uh, I think Gant, Gant Laborde, our COO. Sounds no, CIO. Right. CIO. Sorry. Gant Laborde, our CIO, is the creator of that script and I don't know if he actually came up with the name. It sounds like something he would have come up with. Maybe it was Steve. I'm not sure. Steve is a former IR member. Uh, but it's a it's a punny name. Uh, it's spelled N-E-W-C-L-E-A-R. So nuclear, but it's when you say it fast, it sounds like nuclear. nuclear. <laughs> and basically what this script does is it blows away everything that is possible to blow away to sort of reset your environment to a pristine state as if you had just set it up or just cloned the repo. Uh, Some of the things it does, like it clears, it deletes all your node modules and reinstalls. So if you had any like outdated packages or things that got in a funky state, uh, clears those out, reinstalls. Um, It clears out iOS derived data. Now, I don't actually know what derived data is other than i know it's something you got to clear out if you're getting weird ios errors do you know what derived data is i'm just confirming i know i'm googling it (laughs) i I think i know exactly what it's talking about (laughs) what this is how much it doesn't like it doesn't impact my daily life i just sometimes have to delete it (laughs) 
<laughs> deleting. So I'm literally Googling deleting derived data, a well-known trick that comes in handy every time Xcode behaves strangely for no obvious reason. That basically sums it up. So that's like, that's the <laughs> command of like going into your iOS and then doing pod. Uh, no, there's like, there's literally a temp folder. in, in Oh, the, in your library. Like, yeah, in your libraries. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, directory it. called derived okay. data. So, so yeah, for this one, you'll need to go into your system files and you kind of go into your user, username, and then within library, there's developer Xcode derived data in the structure. And you'll either find your project that you're working on and then delete everything within there, or just kind of delete everything. Essentially, since we're restarting it all here, it won't, shouldn't affect things. In the past, I've, I think I've done this once before. And I just kind of reset everything completely. Uh, I think you can also, uh, when Xcode is open, you can run the clean command, which I think there's a keyboard shortcut. Yeah, I think it's Command Shift K. If you have a, if you're using mm, yeah, a keyboard, that sounds right. So if you have Xcode open with your iOS project, you can run Command Shift K, and I think that will clear clean the build folder as well as derived data. Yeah, that's always uh, a believe. good good check to do before running your project. Yeah. Uh, so in that case, yeah, der- it deletes derived data like we just talked about, and it also clears out the build folder. And the build folder just contains the uh, the output, the outputted uh, binaries, the like installable builds. So you'll you'll you will have to run React Native, run iOS again to rebuild after you do that. But it should be a clean, nice, clean slate. So I think that kind of covers the iOS side, right? Mm-hmm. We clear derived data, we clean. And then kind of higher level React Native in general, you can you know, restart your, your watchman. So restart your server with resetting your cache so that we're all set. You can delete your node modules and reinstall. And we said on iOS, you know, you can delete your pods and your pod lock file. And then I don't have- know if it deletes the pod lock. It definitely deletes the pods. Okay. Because uh, your, your pods directory, which is basically equivalent to deleting your node modules mm-hmm. directory. And then you'd and have then to run re-installs. pod install. Yeah. 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 And then you should have a clean iOS build to then rerun and get set up. And if you're still getting the error after that, I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you may just have to keep Googling or come ask in the IR community Slack. Yes. Uh, community.infinite.red. Maybe someone will be able to help you. From the Android side, uh, the equivalent sort of clean function is Gradle clean. And I believe that's if you're in the Android folder, it's dot slash Gradle W, one word, all the dot slash one word space clean. And that'll just run a Gradle clean. I'm curious what that command, what do you, what do you call that command in your head when you're running it? Do you call the it Gradle, Gradle W? I do. Because I definitely call it Gradle U. Gradle U. Oh, <laughs> I, I don't start know if I'm it. the only one. <laughs> uh, I wonder if the W I'm, stands for anything. I that's a really good question. Regardless of what our search comes up with for the name of this Gradle, I think we should just stay at Gradle. Oh, bummer. I'm going to call it Gradle Wrapper. Oh, boo! That's, that's boring. That's very boring. Gradle Wrapper. I'm I I will always call it Gradle in my head, even if nobody else in the world does that. Now that's ingrained <laughs> in my head forever. <laughs> uh, so yes, cleaning cleaning Gradle. Uh, fixes a lot of things in Android. Yeah. Um, there's also, I think that's the only thing I know to do for Android other than completely delete, like deleting the the app off of your simulator or device. Yeah. Th- that's like, that's the nuclear, not nuclear. That's the nuclear option where you just <laughs> delete the app, delete your entire code, like repo. <laughs> right. I have repo. done that. Yeah. I I've have done, done that. Several that. Times. Now, yeah. This is kind of just off the top of my head. There is also another issue with sometimes your node version being out of sync. And that's kind of like really, really, really deep in the weeds. Mm -hmm. Um, It could come by you, you know, deciding you get the prompt and you're like, yeah, sure. Update my node version. And then all of a sudden you're on node. What are we on? 18. But I think React Native is only working up to version 17, I believe, right now. So you could be stuck in that situation where you need to downgrade your node, make sure your terminal is using that new lower version of node and then running things. I definitely recommend having a node version manager mm-hmm. uh, for, for 
managing your environment because sometimes there may even be differences between two different projects and you need to be able to switch easily. Uh, NVM is uh, the most common, I think, but that's what I use. It's I don't know at Infinite Red. It's it's um not as popular. I don't know. Uh, a lot of our people use N. Yeah, I use NVM. Yeah, I also use NVM. This is going to start another another thread that ends in a GIF. <laughs> uh, whatever you use, just some kind of version yeah. managers, very very much recommended. Yeah. Other than that, oh Watchmen, you'd want to mm. you run uh, Watchmen Watch Dell All, and if you don't know Watchmen is it's a library that I don't actually know. What does Watchmen do? See, I this I'm learning so much. I know all the stuff that you're supposed to run, but I don't actually know why. <laughs> I think it helps uh, Metro watch for changes in your JavaScript. Is that for um, like live reloading? I believe. I mean, it's yes, I believe so. So it it's actually a Facebook package. So I think it was built specifically for um, React Native. React Native uses Watchmen to detect when you've made code changes and then automatically build and push the update to your device without the need to manually refresh. So, okay, yeah. so it's for live, yeah. live reload. So there's live, live reloading, essentially. But sometimes you can get stale Watchmen processes, mm-hmm. um, especially especially if, you're, if you've been uh, building multiple apps. That happened. That ha- used to happen to me all the time on a client project where they had multiple like uh, brownfield React Native apps, mm-hmm. and so you had to have they were like you may have be running three separate servers for three separate React Native projects. So I was constantly having to to clear out Watchmen, and that kind of goes back to the whole port business of making mm-hmm. sure you're on the right ports and all that. Yeah, if you I I can't remember which exactly which red screen error it is but there's one of them uh where it specifically gives you a list of like four different things to try one of which is oh yeah clearing your watchman deleting your node modules clearing your yarn or your metro cache all the things that we just talked about um, which is helpful (laughs) do you as a as someone who's troubleshooting my error do i have to go through all this stuff and potentially including what we talked about earlier with the port and reinstalling an app do you have to do all of this to get your app working would you say um if i'm if i've been stuck on a particular error for a while then i basically just do everything i can think of because it just it ensures me that i'm in as clean of an environment state as i can and that it's not being caused by something transient in my environment i I would agree with that And, and if you think about it from Some people might be like, well, what about my production? Is my production going to get stuck and all that? No, because, you know, when you're doing a new build, it essentially kind of resets everything from scratch for you. So at the end of the day, you're pretty much doing the same thing to kind of get a a new build or an updated build Mm -hmm. on your device. Those are the the main troubleshooting strategies we use. I'll make sure to link uh, our nuclear. I think it's it's a it's actually a package you can install global npm package you can install so i'll make sure to link that in the show notes so let's um we've talked about errors you might see and then troubleshooting strategies for addressing those errors but what about preventing errors in the first place yeah and that's where all types of testing can kind of come in to your code i believe react native episode 180 testing strategies tools and frameworks kind of dives deeper into this. So I don't think we'll, we necessarily have to go too deep. Yeah. But on a high level, there's multiple things you can do to make sure your code is good. First one I'll touch on is just simple unit testing, small parts of your code, individual functions, individual classes. Uh, you can even, I believe nowadays, even test your hooks and make sure all that's working as expected. So put in as much unit tests as you can. Just make sure you your functions that your apps are calling are clean and you are returning what's expected. Definitely. It's also like anytime you have a utility file or if you're if you're encapsulating some of your custom hooks in like in their own files, that's a good place for unit testing. Anytime where you're doing sort of plain JavaScript, TypeScript, that's probably a good place for unit testing. Another one is integration testing. So what is that necessarily? Yeah, if you, I'm pretty sure if you ask 
like each developer will probably give you a different answer about what integration testing is. Yeah. We we had a, another one of those epic Slack conversations about testing a couple weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. Well, according to React Native's documentation, at least, when you combine multiple parts of your app together to see them interact, this this could be something, you know, where you have a a page that has a button and then that calls another component that shows, I don't know, let's say a, a text. Does the interaction happen correctly between the two when the button's pressed and it sets a state to show this new component that that component actually mounts correctly and shows the right value on the screen? And, you know, that kind of goes hand in hand with component testing. Do they render as expected? Do mm -hmm. your on-press functions happen as needed? Do you see on the screen what's expected? And mm -hmm. the, the package React Native testing library is a really good one for this. Related to those, there's also uh, the concept of snapshot testing, uh, which is maybe a bit controversial. I don't know. Some people think it's not very useful, but it, it is another option, which is basically tests that take, uh, there's a, a virtual renderer that renders your component and takes a snapshot and then com like compares it to your app's current state. So it's basically a, a regression. Like, did you break something with the changes you just made? And I mean, it's it can be a a good like sanity check, but it's it's not as it's more passive than uh, component testing and integration testing. You're not actively testing something; you're just kind of making sure they didn't change. And then the last one on the list that's kind of encapsulating all this is end-to-end -end testing. There's the two popular ones are Detox and Appium, React Native, Radio Episode One Eight Nine reliable detox kind of goes deeper into what detox is and how it works pretty much what detox does is you kind of see your app interaction kind of running through so a mm -hmm. series of events happening in react Native, this is just an episode of going back to old episodes <laughs> react native radio episode 229 with josh justice in the show notes we kind of link to josh justice's talk for the render atlanta mm -hmm. conference and in the video, you'll see a really good example of the end-to-end -end text testing kind of running through a scenario, I believe, where it mounts the app and it adds a couple to-dos and deletes a couple and kind of runs through that interaction. That's a really good way to test your app. I, one of the apps I had built in the past, um, it's now no longer on the App Store. Uh, the company has since been bought off and folded, but it was a workout app. And pretty much what it, what we did with Detox was we mounted, we logged into this fake user account that we had set up on the back end. And every day you had to fill out a form. We filled out a, we filled out a mock form. Um, we had different scenarios built out where every path would kind of fill the form out differently, give you different, like you, you just, let's say you just lifted or you just went for a run. It'll input all that and then give you your recovery workouts. And then the app would run through the workout and then kind of give you, tell you to ice your knee, for example. Huh. So we had all those mapped out and it would run through that in detox. And it was really fun to see it flying through all that and kind of showing you on the screen. It literally opens up a, a simulator and you can see it like as if like a phantom person is clicking through your app. It's wild. Yeah, it's really cool. And it, it, it's very rewarding at the end after you build all these end-to-end -end tests and you see them run through and you get all your green check marks. And even, I mean, you could have everything that we just talked about, unit and integration component intent all happening at once. And once you see all those green check marks happen, you know, pretty much kind of covered as many bases as you can to make sure your app is clean and good to go for the user. Awesome. Well, I think that kind of covers everything that we are going to get to today. Hopefully uh, this was either helpful or relatable, <laughs> <laughs> depending on how experienced you are. If you'd like to nerd out some more about React Native, of course, check out Jamin's Twitch stream, React Native Live at rn.live or youtube.infinite.red. He spends a couple hours, a couple times a week, just doing random stuff in React Native. Uh, it's a good time. Uh, you can also join our Slack community at community.infinite.red. We, we have almost 2,000 React Native developers in there. Uh, lots of helpful people if you're if you're stuck on an error that you just can't fix and you've tried running nuclear and it's still happening, come hit up our Slack community. I think I see an error posted every single day. So <laughs> you're not alone. Yep. Where can people find you on Twitter, Mazen? I'm at Mazen Chami. You can DM Mazen with your questions too. <laughs> <laughs> 
closing my DMs now. Uh, uh, and of course, I'm at Robin underscore Hines, and we can find React Native Radio at React Native RDIO on Twitter. As always, thanks to our producer and editor, Todd Wirth, our assistant editor and episode release coordinator, Jed Bartowski, our designer, Justin Husky, and our guest coordinator, Derek Greenberg. Thanks to our sponsor, Infinite Red. Check us out at infinite.red slash React Native. And a special thanks to all of you listening today. Make sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, remember that Infinite Red is also still hiring React Native engineers. So if you're a senior level React Native engineer in the US or Canada, go to careers.infinite.red. We'll see you next time. 